Hola. From Sevilla. Welcome back to the channel, guys. And in today's video, we're in the beautiful city of Sevilla, España. And And we're gonna show you our favorite things to do in this beautiful city. I love this place so much because this is the place where I studied abroad seven years ago. And so now my primo or cousin, Berto, is living in Sevilla. So he's giving us the grand tour. And with that, we're gonna show you guys some of our favorite things to do here. So we'll see you guys in the first place. Hello there, I am Berto. I'm, I'm honored to be guest starring in this top 10 things to do in Sevilla, um, or in Spain for that matter. And, and one of the most important things that you should do is you should enjoy tapas, and you should always enjoy tapas with your friends and family when they're in town. Today we have a lovely selection. Uh, one of these things here is pulpito, which is a tiny octopus, but it actually looks like a squid. Next to it we have, uh, I believe it's ensaladilla de, de, de gambas, which is like a potato salad with gambas um, that are shrimp. And then right here we have a fried mystery thing that our, our friendly waiter suggested to us. We're going to cut it open and eat it. Um, we're at the Triana Market, which is in the, the neighborhood um, of Triana, <laughs> and we're at a, a restaurant called El Loco de San Lucar. Uh, haven't been here, but I have eaten at this at this market before, and I think it's gonna be fantastic. Uh, the, the important thing about tapas is is I guess at the heart of the Spanish uh, culture in general is that you know this this entire Spanish culture and the Spanish identity is about community and, and spending a lot of time with your friends and family, and so. I think that's where the origin of these tapas come from is you have these small dishes and you order many of them to share with you with everyone and, and so that's what we're about to do is we're about to embark on a on a delicious journey of, of Sevilla tapas and so we'll get back to you. Alright guys, so we are at the Setas de Sevilla, which is a 360 viewing point in the heart of Sevilla, Spain. It costs three euros to get up here. You take a really cool elevator ride up and then you come out and there's a cafe where you get some drinks or coffee or pizza. And then there's a really cool path that kind of winds its way around where you get full 360 incredible views of the city. So now we're at the Sevilla Cathedral, which is a beautiful, breathtaking cathedral in the middle of Sevilla. It's one of the biggest cathedrals in the world by volume. It has 80 chapels inside, and it also houses the tomb of Christopher Columbus, which is pretty crazy. So it costs nine euros to get in and walk around. So then you'll also see behind me a very tall tower, which is the bell tower of the church. But it actually used to be part of a mosque. And rather than stairs leading up to, to the top of the tower, which is what you typically experience with towers like this, there are actually ramps leading the way up. Uh, the person who would lead the call to prayer back when it was a mosque, way back in the day, preferred to ride his horse up rather than walk. I'm guessing this is where he rode his horse in before making the trek up. All right, so we're starting up the 17 floors or 35 ramps in order to get to the top here, imagining what it'd be like to take a horse up. Made it up to the top and it is beautiful views, but you need to fight for your viewpoint. 
We just made it back down to 35 ramps and the views were absolutely beautiful. However, the only downside was there were so many people at this time that it did uh, get a little bit crowded. So if you can make it there a little bit earlier in the day, I think that'll definitely be much better. But we'll see you guys at the next spot. All right guys, we just arrived at our next spot and we'll tell you where it is once we get to the top of this tower. All right guys, so we just made it up to the top of the Torre del Oro, which is known as the Tower of Gold. It's this beautiful and photogenic tower right next to the river in Sevilla from the 13th century. So it's quite old. All right guys, just teleported to the bottom of the tower here. It was so windy up there that we had to go to a different spot. But as I was saying, this is a gorgeous tower and it sits right on the river. So definitely come down here and check this place out. It's really up to you if you wanna to go to the top of the tower because there's these guardrails that don't allow you to get to the very tip of it. So the views are only okay, but just coming down and looking at it from where we are right here is absolutely stunning too. And it costs you three euros to go to the top. So if you don't wanna spend the three euros and you still wanna see this beautiful thing, just do a walk around it and you're gonna love it. to our next spot in Sevilla, which is El Parque. Parque Maria Luisa. One of the best spots to see because it's just so relaxed. Here to this massive amount of acres where you can just sit down, have a couple bocadillas with a few friends, have some tinto verano, need to bring some jamón and cheddar. But actually it's a, a really nice place to just come and hang out and spend time with friends and just walk through. It's always sunny in Sevilla, so it's a beautiful walk through the park. There's a bunch of gardens and all different things to see when you stroll through the park. So definitely a great place to see. We consider this one here the best in Sevilla. There are other parks. Check them all out, of course, if you have time. But this is the spot. We'll see you guys after we have a few Tinto Veranos y Bocadillos. Sí. Gracias. De nada. Right, guys we're at my favorite spot in all of Sevilla like literally by far my most favorite so like I said at the beginning of the video I studied abroad here and this would be the spot where I would come and just hang out and sit down and just look at this beautiful place known as the Plaza de España this thing has been in so many different movies and I could go into all the history, but honestly, just look at how beautiful this place is. The architecture of this is the main reason why you wanna come and check this out. Every little square inch of this whole massive U-shaped building has been thoroughly thought through with so many beautiful details. So just come take a look at the rest of this place. It is so phenomenally beautiful. You're gonna to wanna to spend hours just looking at this. And if you're really feeling up to it, you can just hop on one of these rowboats, which lets you go 180 degrees around in this little river canal in front of the plaza, and it's phenomenal. All right, hello. I just bare toe again. Another one of the main things that you can do here in, in Sevilla is come down to the Rio Guadalquivir. I hope I said that right. It's a great place to come and walk and see the entire city. Also catch a sunset, drink a nice cool uh, Cruz Campo and uh, hang out with your friends, of course. It's also a fantastic place to walk along or bike along because it's a long flat stretch of, of the city that's beautiful to, to see and hang out with. And you have a bunch of really beautiful bridges, kayaking, paddle boarding, and, and so on and so forth. But come catch a sunset here with a nice cold beer. So when you're checking out the city of Sevilla, there are multiple modes of transportation. You can do everything from a horse carriage to these little like four-seater pedal bike type things, or you can walk, which is what I do, and I absolutely love it because that's how you see the city the best is just walk around and stroll through. 
um, but you can also obviously take public transportation. But one of the best ways is also to take one of the ceviches. There's 250 Sevillan bike locations all around here, so you can pick up one of the bikes and drop it off wherever. You can stroll through the parks to all the other different areas around here, and it's a great way to just cruise around and see it. So as you can probably see right behind me, there are bike lanes everywhere. This is the most bike-friendly city. It's not like some of the cities in the United States where you literally have to ride your bike in the middle of the road and share it with traffic. Here it is literally like your own blocked off two lane, uh, two way road where you can cruise bikes up and down. So it's really safe. All right guys, so we're arriving to one of the 250 ceviche bike station terminals here. And surprisingly, this one only has one bike available. At most of the other stations, there are so many bikes usually available. This must mean it's a hot spot to pick up your bike and go to one of the, one of the more touristy spots, which is where usually you'll see the most bikes parked because a lot of people will come here from the further out neighborhoods and then bike right in so they can be right downtown. It's super simple to get on one of these bikes. All you have to do is you go up to this terminal right here and I recommend doing it at the beginning of your trip because from my research and checking the machine, you can only do week-long rentals or like for the uh, annual membership. And so it makes sense to do this at the beginning of your trip and that way you can maximize the amount of time you can ride these ceviches. And how it works is you go there, you get a one-week pass for just under 14 euros and then you have access to ride these bikes around the city and you just dock them up whenever you're done with it. So as you can see here, there, there is a uh, terminal right here. Um, after you go to the kiosk, and you come to the machine here and you undock your bike. Hey, so right now we're in the old Jewish quarter of Sevilla, the Barrio Santa Cruz. We're walking towards the Carboneria, which is a flamenco bar. It's a very famous flamenco bar here where you don't have to pay entry. You just go and watch flamenco have a tinto de verano or a beer and um, we're walking through these tight alleyways and uh, about to go find that and you can always see some beautiful open courtyards that are notorious around Sevilla and, and Santa Cruz but it's a beautiful place to come and walk you've got some hanging vines above your head and check out these narrow passageways they're pretty incredible and there's a silence in in this area that you can't find in many other places in the, in the city so it's a great place to come and relax and enjoy it. So here we are outside of the Carboneria, the incredibly famous flamenco bar. Uh, we're going to come here later tonight, but we're not going to film it because the whole philosophy behind flamenco is that you come in and enjoy it with your friends. And you don't take a camera or a phone and record the whole thing. You just enjoy it for what it is in your present and loving it. So you got to come to Sevilla to check it out. So the last and final spot you'll want to see here in the beautiful city of Sevilla, Spain here is the Alcazar de Sevilla. So unfortunately, I'm not going to take you guys through right now because I have a bus to Granada in just a couple hours. And as you can probably see, the line is very, very long. Why didn't I do this earlier in the trip? Well, I've actually done this uh, seven years ago when I studied abroad. So I've been in it and I can tell you it is so amazing. But what is the Alcazar, right? What it is is it's the royal palace that you can go ahead and do tours all around this beautiful place. And actually the upper levels are still lived in by the royal family. So definitely go and check this place out. So guys, as always, thanks for watching and hopefully these 10 things to do in Sevilla have helped you during your planning for your upcoming trip. So as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys in the next video.